the Automated Podcast. Welcome to the Automated Podcast with your host, Mark Verbenkov. So this week's episode is a little different. The reason for this is that part of the intro will actually be done by an AI-generated double of my voice. So unlike the voice in the intro that was specifically chosen to sound very much like a robot, to really go along with the theme of this podcast, this voice is quite a bit more realistic and human-like. And part of the Descript content editing tool set, which will be the focus of today's episode. You can actually try and guess where the voice double is used in the small intro. So I actually spoke about Descript in one of the previous episodes where I was uh, presenting the future of podcasting at a conference. So I'm actually really happy to be able to talk to somebody from the company to give some insights into the capabilities and really the impact that advanced editing tools can have for different industries. So today's guest is Jay LaBeouf, who leads the business development at Descript. He's best known for his work on Academy Award-winning Avid Pro Tools as a founder and pioneer of artificial intelligence in music creation and production with image research, an executive at Emmy Award-winning Isotope, and founder and CEO of industry education nonprofit Real Industry. So Jay is a lecturer on media technology and business at Stanford University, Carnegie Mellon, and the University of Michigan. And he comes onto the podcast today to talk about Descript, the content editing tools that are available, and the future of media and content creation. So before jumping into the conversation with Jay, do you think you were able to pick out exactly where the AI voice double was being used? I used it about eight or nine times, mostly for single words, but there was one sentence where it was completely the AI voice double. So I'll be using this software over the next few months, and you'll probably hear the AI voice double being used a couple more times. But hopefully my editing skills with the software will get a little bit better as well, as this is the first time that I was using it. So it was probably easy, or at least relatively easy to pick out where it was being used, but hopefully not in the future. Great. Well, hi there, Jay. Thanks for coming on to the Automated Podcast. Thanks for having me, Mark. Right on. Uh, I'm really excited today uh, to have you on. So I've actually used Descript in a presentation that I did back in August to talk about kind of the future of podcasting and how uh, content creation is going to be impacted in the future. So I'm really happy to have you come on to talk about Descript, uh, the work that you guys are doing, and of course, how this is going to be impacting uh, jobs and the kind of larger number of industries. But one of the ways that I like to start off my conversations with my guests is to kind of get a little bit more of a personal uh, point of view from, from yourself. So kind of what made you initially interested in this, you know, voice, text, or content creation, editing world that you and uh, Descript are part of? Yeah, I've been doing this for about 20 years now, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, I actually started off as a, I mean, it goes all the way back to college. I was a unhappy electrical engineer who was mm -hmm. spending most of my time performing with my college band and uh, the place that I would go to find relief from what were very boring, very theoretical electrical engineering talks was our recording studio. So we would go in the recording studio and it was our junior year of college. I'm with this band and I'm looking around and I see all these knobs and lights and blinking and you know, it's, it looks like a, a futuristic spaceship. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time when I, I have my aha moment. Oh my God, there's actually an industry around this. There are people that build this gear. There are people that are involved in the engineering, the sound design, the marketing, the business. Why aren't my, why aren't my professors talking about this? Right. And that really started my journey. Uh, I went to grad school for music and audio engineering um, out at Stanford at their uh, Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics and really pursued my dream job after that, which was to work on the Pro Tools team. So that was the first you know, eight, eight and a half years of my career was working at Avid on the Pro Tools team and really starting to do some of the foundational work to integrate AI and machine learning into these uh, professional and consumer audio products. 
And now you're a part of Descript, which is continuing that trend for the podcasting community, for the content creator communities. I, I've looked into the company quite a bit. It's, it's fascinating. I'll actually be using Descript to be editing this episode, but uh, I was hoping you could discuss the, the company Descript itself a little bit for the, for the audience who doesn't know. Absolutely. So Descript, the, the company's a couple of years old, and it actually is a spinoff of a startup that came before it called Detour. So the founding team of Descript um, was you know, running a startup called Detour. Detour was providing augmented reality audio apps. So basically, you know, we could be in Berlin and we say, we're going to take a tour of this neighborhood. You pop up your phone and there'd be a, a GPS guided app that would know where you are and kind of speak to you as you're walking around Berlin in that example. Mm -hmm. Now, to create these tours, they needed something that was really good at narrative storytelling. And the typical tools, you know, for, for folks who've maybe never edited, uh, edited audio before, you basically record your sound and you see a little waveform. Um, it looks like this little squiggly line that is a representation of the volume of your voice over time. And People have really just used that one and only one paradigm to do all of their editing for 25 years at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, the breakthrough that the Detour team had was, you know, if we're going to create these narrative storytelling experiences and these tours, we're going to need to pair up a script with the actual audio. Mm -hmm. And the people creating the tours had never edited audio. So they actually created an internal tool that really just paired up a written script with audio. And it took advantage of a lot of these um, you know, advances in AI. I mean, speech recognition has gone to actually be something that is almost completely commoditized. It's very, very inexpensive. It is incredibly accurate. Mm -hmm. And so Descript was able to build on that layer and create something from the ground up. Now, I said all this as a detour. I was doing this as an internal tool. Uh, that, that founding team actually realized that there is something more to, to Descript the internal app than the rest of the company. And so they actually spun that out into Descript as a separate company. And so we're going on our third year as a, uh, as, as a startup that's working to basically act as a Google Docs for audio and video creators. So now in the same way that you can edit a Google Doc, you can collaborate with others. You have that expectation that you can cut, copy, paste, spell check, highlight, you know, rearrange content and just get your story dialed in. You can now do that with Descript. And as you move the text around, all of the audio and the video edits follow along with it kind of automagically. Mm -hmm. From my first introduction to Descript, that's really the the main powerful aspect of it, right? You can change or edit these audio files or video files simply by changing the text in a script, which is uh, maybe for those people that don't have an idea of content creation or even you know podcast editing, that's really time consuming. Because as you said, you're looking at this waveform, you're trying to pick out the ums and the ahs and you know, shorten uh, speech here and there to make it a little bit more crisp for the audience. But if you can do that through text, it's, it's very simple because it's an easy form to navigate through. Well, ex exactly, Mark. And, you know, the, if you look at the evolution of Descript, you know, here, here's this, what started as, many people thought of as a, a transcription tool mm -hmm. where you are, you know, we could take our interview and just bring it in and then see a complete written transcript with speaker labels, mind you, you know, mm -hmm. saying Mark's talking here, Jay's talking here. Uh, layers of AI were, were added in in order to bring this incredible functionality. So uh, being able to do automatic speaker recognition and know that, okay, Jay's speaking here, Mark's speaking here. Again, you're removing something that human transcriptionists used to do manually. Then you're layering up other things like, okay, uh, some people have certain filler words. I, I'm a big um and ah type person. Right. And during, a, during the course of a long conversation, you'll have a lot of these things. So with Descript, well, we not only recognize what um and ah sound like from the transcription, but we could then build in some natural language processing. 
So that way, yeah, maybe um and ah are natural and easy to recognize, but things like like, kind of, kind of like, those are other types of filler words that you need to understand the semantics of how they're being used in order to remove them. So we're able to layer on these additional uh, AI tricks like removing filler words, uh, removing word gaps, you know, all those long, awkward spaces between words like I just did there. Um, with one click in Descript, you can have those shortened up. And now all of a sudden conversations sound more natural. And what I'm really excited about and what brought me to Descript for this part of you know, my own journey is the company's focus on empowering storytellers. Mm -hmm. And there are just so many of us that might not be comfortable pulling out a mic and just talking. And even if we're writing out a full script, um, you now have the tools to make yourself sound better so that way maybe a filler word or long dramatic pauses that, that's not getting in the way of you delivering your message. You can actually tell the story you want to tell in your own voice. Yeah, I think that's incredibly powerful. Uh, I had a previous guest from the company Synthesia based out of the UK, and they do uh, deep fakes. And one of the kind of the main ideas that I really pulled from that discussion was this ability to make the method of communication, whether that's audio, video, or uh, picture format, much more immersive or engaging for the audience. In this podcast, the amount of ums and ahs that I have said as well is too many to count, unfortunately. But I do think that even in that millisecond where that is said, it, it does detract a little bit from the audience's attention or, or takes away from the engagement. So if, uh, as you're saying, with this, this powerful AI is able to recognize all these ums and ahs and, and other filler words throughout the course of this discussion and you know, essentially delete them in the span of a, a second or two, it will obviously increase the engagement capability of this podcast and, and many others, but also really give um, other people who may not be super comfortable starting a podcast that ability to feel maybe more confident in producing the kind of interesting content that, that they actually want to. Right. And that's, that's exactly it. And it's not about making everyone sound perfect. I can see mm. some people in thinking and, you know, most of my background before joining Deestrip was actually on the music recording and music production side. And so you look at the, the analogies you have there, you know, people would look at Pro Tools, which is, you know, the industry standard for a recording studio. People would look at Pro Tools and just for a long time think that it was removing the soul out of music. Mm. And you know, a drummer could play a part and their timing could be kind of sloppy. And with Pro Tools, you could very quickly tighten it up and make it sound you know, mechanical and robotic. Mm -hmm. And people would talk about using auto-tune to clean up a pop singer's voice. And then it became a point of like, oh, you don't have to learn how to sing anymore because you can just run auto-tune on it. Right. And those are tools. And the responsibility then comes also from the, the users and the producer and the ultimate creator uh, who's, who's doing this work. So what we're doing is giving our users tools and the um and ah removal, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great example. Mm -hmm. It is just as easy to remove all of them as it is to quickly go through and audition them and selectively remove the ones that you want because it adds a, a definite element of authenticity. Yeah. And we, we, we actually are going to publish something on our blog uh, by the time this podcast comes out some, some great research on how a certain amount of ums and ahs actually do make somebody more relatable, more trustworthy, and more interesting because it, it, it doesn't feel as, as scripted. So, uh, yeah, that's something that we're really excited about. Yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a really interesting point that's valuable for these uh, content creators that are growing in number across the planet. Um, and allowing the minute kind of um, mistakes really increases that engagement with, with the audience because it makes it sound like, hey, you're talking or listening to or watching uh, an actual human rather than a, a perfect uh, robot, which uh, well, we're not there yet maybe, but maybe in a couple of years that will, that will actually come out. Absolutely. But it, it actually goes to you know, another good use case of helping creators with something that either they have a challenge with or they just feel more comfortable having an AI represent their voice. So, you know, I, I have a nice mic in my place and I'm, I'm, I'm lucky mm -hmm. I have good equipment. I 
speak to people all the time. I, I, I don't mind being able to just record something and put it out there. Some people are a lot more timid about that. Maybe they are uncomfortable with their speaking style. They don't have access to a good mic or good recording conditions. Um, they're not a confident speaker for, for any reasons. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want someone else to do the talking for you. And so that was an, another recent introduction uh, that we added into Descript, which is a technology called Overdub and specifically stock voices. So with the Overdub technology, you actually can create your own voice double. So you just record yourself reading a training script for 10 minutes. You submit that to us, we process it in the cloud, and then now you can actually type out text and it will read it and speak it as if it's actually you. And it's something that has you know, been very popular and you know, we have some great audio examples we could play in a bit. Um, so not only do we have the ability to create your own voice double, but if you are not comfortable with your own voice and you just wanna use some stock voices, you know, some professional voice talent, we actually have eight totally free voice doubles that people can use that you know sound uh, mm -hmm. sound really good. And you just type out your message. Uh, you could type out the introduction to this podcast. You could type out the sponsor of the podcast. Anything you can do there, you type it out, and then we synthesize the voice and play it out. Yeah, and I think uh, an interesting point or a relevant point to this is. Uh, some people might not appreciate the fact of just how close this digital double is to your actual own voice. Uh, I was having a conversation with a friend before we started recording this and trying to explain to her, um, you know, the voice double is very similar to your own voice. And she was making a joke that, oh, it's probably some, you know, robot voice with high pitches. It's very clearly different from your own voice. And maybe I'll have an audio sample put in right here so that the audience members can get a, a real idea of just how close this is. The overdub voice you are listening to right now was created using only 10 minutes of training audio. The overdub voice you are listening to right now was created using only 30 minutes of training audio. The overdub voice you are listening to right now was created using only 90 minutes of training audio. It's completely AI generated, which uh, goes back to the points that we were discussing before. This gives people that are potentially shy about speaking into a mic the opportunity to write out text and generate uh, audio for whatever it is that they want to share with the world in such a way that they themselves don't have to speak. And yet it's still their voice that's that's being generated. Absolutely. And the, the other the other use case we're seeing uh, quite commonly in I would say if we looked at a sample of some of the top 100 Apple podcasts, mm -hmm. uh, a good fraction of them would have their hosts using overdub now. And what they're using it for is not to speak completely synthetically, but to actually do a contextual modification. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, let's say in this introduction, you introduced me as George LaBeouf instead of Jay LaBeouf. Right. And after the fact, you're like, oh my goodness, what a mistake. You, with Descript and using this overdub technology, as long as you have your voice double created, it's as simple as double clicking on the transcript on the word George, change it to J. And what we do is we send the voice model, we send the audio to the left of it, the audio to the right of it, and then the new word that you want. And we send all that up to the cloud and process the most natural way of replacing your typo you know, your, your <laughs> voice typo and, and fixing it that way. And so we're seeing quite a lot of people save a lot of studio time. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is also something that's being used for audiobook recording. You know, you have 10 right. hours of recording a script. Now there is a producer in the room who is following line by line and uh, trying to make sure there's no mistakes, but there are always mistakes. And, you know, if it's 30 hours to have a have readings for it for an eight hour audio book usually there has to be at least one pickup session where you're spending three to four additional hours to catch all the mistakes and with overdub that producer or that editor can see what the mistake is and just type it in yeah i, I think that's very key for for the audience to, to understand right you're not editing the audio or the the video in the traditional means you're really just editing text it's simply selecting, deleting, or adding. I think that's another key point to Overdub. You can add other 
words to a sentence that you already have just by typing and the AI program that you have will generate the, the extra word in the audio. Uh, I was wondering if you could maybe speak to the AI a little bit, like exactly how does that work? How is it able to learn how you speak? You mentioned something about some training. Is there a minimum or maximum amount of training that you need to do for this AI program to learn how it is that you speak and then generate it? Absolutely. For people that like good uh, entrepreneurial stories, mm. um, this technology actually came from a company called Lyrebird. And Lyrebird and the, the, the three founders of Lyrebird, uh, Alex, Jose, and Kunden, who are now part of our team, they really make, they really made waves in the artificial intelligence community and also the speech community by developing this system that could take really just minutes of audio and create a very lifelike speech model for you. And up to that point, companies like Amazon and Google and Microsoft required you to have you know, 100 hours of content mm-hmm. or at least, mm-hmm. at least dozens of hours of content. And we've all probably read those stories of how painstaking it was to create the voice of Siri. Uh, and these were just really laborious processes. <laughs> So um, using a uh, AI technique called GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks. Um, you know, this was techniques that were very popular uh, in the research community for image generation um, and you know, looking at tons of works of art and generating new art from that. They were able to take this technology and this approach and be some of the first pioneers to apply it to speech generation. And so taking a much smaller amount of data, in their case, minutes of data of someone speaking, they could capture all the essential voice characteristics and create create a voice model from that. We have some great examples that uh, we could put them in the show notes um, Mm -hmm. that show how the system sounds when you use different amounts of training data. I mean, you could train it with as little as a minute and it sounds incredible, um, but what we're really proud of is really when you get to about 10 minutes, if you, know, if you have time, maybe 20 minutes hmm. of yourself reading a training script, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, you read the training script and we'll create this for you. And it just, it just sounds incredible. And the, the technology that we're using definitely rivals, um, and again, some more links I can, I can link to for everybody, but compared to you know, Amazon has a service called Amazon Poly. Uh, Google has Google WaveNet. It's kind of crazy that we're a very small team of people, but we're punching far above our weight uh, <laughs> in order to uh, offer this technology to users. Well, I think that's the the beauty of uh, startups, right? And the disruptive potential that startups have been having for, for generations. Maybe also to kind of give a little bit of scope to how this technology has improved over the last 15 to 20 years. Maybe you're familiar with uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I remember some 15 years ago, I had a family member that was uh, training the software uh, to recognize his voice so that uh, he would be able to speak to the computer and it would type out emails. Um, and I think it was a, a 40 hour training session in order for the software to recognize his voice, in order to just simply speak to the computer and send out a couple of emails. And now you're saying, you know, it's, it's some 15 years later, the technology is available that in only some 20 minutes, 30 minutes max, the software is able to recognize and generate your own voice with such a little amount of training. Uh, I can only imagine that in, in the next 5, 10, 15 years or so, whether it's your team or others, it would be, I mean, maybe not nearly instantaneous, but it would be a fraction of that time for the training to happen in order to generate these kind of uh, voice doubles. It's already happening now, Mark. Mm-hmm. So with our, with our, our enterprise clients, uh, we actually allow them to bypass the training step because let's say you, we're working with somebody at NPR. Well, they already have hours and hours and hours right, of right. existing footage of their hosts talking. So as long as we can get a voice consent statement from that host, uh, basically that host reading a one paragraph statement that you know legally 
authorizes them to have their voice double created by us. As long as we're able to get that one paragraph statement, we can then just ingest their past archives. And there you go. We have Iris, Ira Glass's voice double. Or mm -hmm. there you go. We have Joe Rogan's voice double. Now, uh, it's important and, and why I'm really proud that deep fake usually doesn't come up um, in the conversations about Descript. It's nowhere on our website mm -hmm. because of our, our ethics and the way we handle it. So with, surely there are listeners who are thinking like, oh my God, I'm going to go create a Joe Rogan voice double. Right, uh, right. That was actually the actually, question I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, we have usage data. We see what people are trying to do. Right. And a, a non-trivial amount of people are trying to see if they can game the system, whether, you know, mostly it's for fun. They just want to see what can be done and, and test the system. And it, you need a consent statement from an existing user in order to do it. And we only give the voice double to that person. And then it's up to that person to decide, you know, so if, if it's you, Mark, your voice double would be assigned to you. Now, if you had an editor or a producer and you want to assign the voice to them so they can make editorial corrections on your behalf or generate a new sentence here or there, go for it. It's your voice. You can do what you want, mm -hmm. but it's our job. And this is something that, you know, we have some very strict guidelines on. We will only create the voice of the owner. Now with our enterprise plans, you just provide us a one paragraph verbal consent statement in our system. As long as the voice print matches the archive, very good. You're good. And now you almost instantly have your voice double. Yeah, I, I think that's really uh, nice to hear, uh, especially as I've had a couple other guests talk about deep fakes and the, you know, the tremendous power for both positive and negative that these technologies have. Your company's really focusing on the voice aspect of that, but it's nice to hear that this ability to create fake sound, fake voice is, is really being safeguarded by Descript as I think um, we move into an age where all these different forms of deep fakes will, will be making it really difficult for people to trust uh, video first and then audio content as it, as it proliferates in amount as well. I, I absolutely agree. And you know, it is a very frank discussion that we all had. Mm -hmm. We don't see a compelling use case to allow people to create anybody else's voice double. Um, I've, I've yet to be convinced that I should be able to take anyone's audio off of YouTube and then create their voice double for it. I just don't see that as something that we're going to get into. And if people want now, I have people all the time that come in and maybe they do have a, a very legitimate use case for it. Um, you know, but if it, if it isn't in line with our ethics, we'll just say, Hey, <laughs> Google it. There's plenty of open right. source material out. It's, it, there's plenty of tools you can use uh, to get around this. If you want to Descript isn't the only path, uh, but we, we hope to just provide the most legitimate path and also you know, really just, make this super easy. I mean, a, a huge mm -hmm. number of our users are truly new content creators that, you know, GarageBand and iMovie and all these tools that are made to kind of democratize media creation, even, even those tools have become too complex. And GarageBand, uh, for, for everything that it does well, you're still basically editing a waveform. You're still editing this squiggly seismograph that is mm -hmm. mostly a historical article at this point. Um, I, I, there's so many better representations for editing audio. And so we just kind of reduce it and say, you know, we're all storytellers and stories are told narratively and constructed with text. And you can see your beginning and your middle and your end. What? <laughs> First narrative storytelling, uh, audio or video, mm -hmm. um, text is really just a superior representation. And I think this may be uh, segues into kind of the, the major product release that you had only this morning, right? We're recording this on the 22nd of October. Um, this, this product release is really more connected to video editing. I don't want to misconstrue what actually came out. Could you talk to that maybe before we talk in a little bit more about kind of the larger macro impact that, uh, that this will have? Absolutely. So it, it's been our view for a long time that uh, audio editors and video editors, I mean, these, these were things, you know, even as I mentioned, Apple, you know, a company that we all 
or I greatly admire, mm -hmm. has GarageBand for audio editing and iMovie for video editing. And there's always been this paradigm of, you know, on the professional side, Avid has Pro Tools for audio editing and Media Composer for video editing. And if you could go back in time and do it over again, there's really no logical reason why these things have to live apart. And especially if your central paradigm like ours is on narrative storytelling using text. So uh, Descript has always been known as a, an audio editor, an audio transcriber, a great tool for podcasters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's always done video as well. You know, you could, you could drag in a, an MP4 file or you could import your, your Zoom conversation with someone. And when you cut the text, it would always cut the video. But now we've kind of doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled. We're all in on uh, making Descript a collaborative audio and video editing platform. And so what this includes, um, we give everyone a free screen recorder. So this is a, a cloud-based screen recorder. Uh, we're seeing all of us working from home now and being able to do everything from creating product videos, uh, report bugs and products, uh, share insights with other teams to give you know, uh, user research quotes, customer support materials, um, create vlogs, create YouTube material, um, have educators who are creating online lectures. All of that is being done with screen recording right now. And so we built a screen recorder uh, from the ground up that works on Mac and Windows. And again, it's totally free for people to use. Now, the unique Descript part of it, yes, you can record your webcam, yes, it records your screen, yes, it records computer audio, yes, it records your microphone, and there's that very beautiful button that enables transcription in real time. So let's say I'm going about my day, I find something I want to share with somebody else on my team, um, I do a quick screen recording of you know, a couple of slides that I want mocked up. As I'm doing it, as soon as I hit stop, I can send it to them and a real-time transcript is now part of the video. And so someone can either read what I'm saying uh, and it's very unambiguous <laughs> right there. Um, I can make some quick edits to it if I want. So the fact that I've rambled for a few minutes at the beginning, I can very quickly just select that and hit delete. Uh, or I can you know, add some quick things like we now support you know, animations. So adding in arrows to emphasize what's on the screen, uh, dragging in images. So that way we can you know, tell a story with still images, with GIFs, um, and also with full multi-track video support. So combine all these things, you essentially have a tool that can be used for uh, business use cases, for content creation, um, you know, really just kind of I don't know, one audio and video editor ruled them all. <laughs> I, I like the way that you said that. Um, the, the way that it, I, I understand it, it's, it's an incredibly powerful tool that enables content creators of all different forms, really the ability to edit and uh, I guess maybe very specifically generate what it is that they want to get across to whatever audience in a very easy to use manner. I think that's, that's one of the key things uh, from the little bit that I played around with it before and from the obvious videos and feedback that you've had, it's very easy to use. I, I think this really brings up the notion of kind of what use cases or what industries will be impacted by this. Uh, you know, you have this tremendously powerful tool. We've spoken a little bit about uh, obviously the podcasting industry, which is relevant for, for this podcast. You have YouTubers, you mentioned professors. What are some of the other use cases that you're seeing Descript and now this, you know, this major product release within Descript uh, really impacting? Absolutely. You know, I'd encourage anybody listening to imagine they were me. Imagine you're head of business development and you need to figure out Who's going to use this tool and who is this tool valuable to? Now, podcasters, it's kind of the low-hanging fruit. Um, we've had that pretty well validated. And uh, vloggers and you know, a lot of social, social media video creation, that's one that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, very obvious. Yeah. Let me tell you the ones that have really surprised me because people, people approach us and talk about how you know, their professional lives have been changed dramatically 
because of this tool. And then we go and we figure out, really, how, how do we do that? I didn't intend on that. Uh, so user research is one great example. Uh, so uh, there's a, a very passionate user of ours at HubSpot, and he leads the user research team there. So HubSpot is very disciplined about talking to their users and their community and getting in there and recording you know, these, these, these long user research sessions about, okay, you know, why you use this feature as opposed to this one? Mm. And you know, what if we added this functionality? How would that impact your workflow? And based on what those people say, the analysis of that is a very like, make or break decision for the company's product direction. So what HubSpot is finding, you know, previously they would have to record all the sessions, transcribe all the sessions, have written transcripts, but then the only way to really communicate the key takeaways would be to summarize it as bullet points or slides. And now uh, they're using Descript to record all the user interviews and then create these very rich media presentations, mm. summarizing the voice of the customer in their own words and showing people's facial reactions as they're occurring. Um, that's something that has been very, very powerful has been the user research piece. Yeah, that, I think that really links to uh, the previous discussion I had uh, with another guest about deep fakes, right? This ability to engage with the content that you're creating is only increasing drastically in the case of, of Descript here to present that information in a new way, right? Rather than uh, text or bullet points, as you were saying, might be a little bit boring for the company to actually use if you're actually able to make this report with either video or or audio uh, it becomes much more engaging and maybe much more able to be digested by those people that actually need to use it in that industry absolutely and you know talk about making content a little bit more interesting uh i'm particularly excited about how it's being used for lectures and online mm -hmm. recording mm -hmm. you know unfortunately 2020 has become the year of everything moving to online education. And this is something that, you know, educational institutions, and I teach at several of them, are very slow to change. They are like the biggest, oldest, stodgiest businesses uh, that, that are just set up to just reject change and just try to do things the most principled way possible. 2020 has thrown this into chaos. And so, now we have a lot of these professors who have always wanted to teach in the most effective way for their students without the tools or the knowledge or the experience in creating compelling online material. And you know, we've all heard about and experienced Zoom fatigue, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter how compelling a public speaker someone is. If you're just staring at a person who's occupying a few hundred by a few hundred pixels on a screen, you're just going to tune out. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we've been you know, piloting our new video features with people where even a professor who's just recording themselves in a few slides can choose to have you know, captions appear at the key takeaway moments. So that way the captions appear on the screen as they're talking. And then images can appear again as someone's talking just to reinforce a certain point. And Nobody wants to spend time mocking up a PowerPoint slide you never use, but there is a certain elegance to investing your time into that video presentation of your material because that will live on. That is now mm -hmm. repurposable evergreen content that you as a lecturer, you as an educator, you as an institution have in your arsenal. Yeah, that's very interesting. It really seems to be that uh, even even the, the kind of boring professors out there are going to be able to maybe not achieve the same sort of engagement level as, say, the, the popular YouTubers, but through tools like Descript and others, they're able to uh, get their information across, again, to their audience, their students, in a way that's much more engaging and hopefully in a way that their audience retains it a little bit better. I, I'm actually very curious to see maybe some studies in five to 10 years looking back at 2020 and how, uh, when these tools have been applied, what the retention rate um, of maybe students at different universities is compared to the years uh, previous where, where professors were kind of maybe droning on in a very monotone voice about potentially the interesting things that they had to say, but monotone and boring nonetheless. Um, I think that uh, these kinds of tools will uh, maybe change the way that 
uh, yeah, information is retained and hopefully have a, a very positive impact on the population as a whole. I, I agree. I agree. The, you know, the, the first wave in online learning, you know, this is, mm-hmm. takes us back to when everybody was talking about MOOCs, yeah. massive yeah. online open course. And, you know, there were Wall Street Journal articles about how this, you know, this technology, this platform evolution is will it put you know Harvard University out of business? <laughs> and it, it was just just like we've seen with a technology hype cycle, um, it vastly overpromised, and then it kind of went through its own kind of trough of disillusionment where mm-hmm. everybody thought, oh nope, there's actually nothing here. Move along, and now we're 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 back. It's it's smoothed out. And all MOOCs really refer to is the distribution mechanism, similar to mm-hmm. how Spotify and Pandora are there to distribute music democratically. So technically, you can upload your music and anyone in the world can listen to it. It doesn't mean you're creating good content, though. So now yeah. we're on kind of the next thing. We have the distribution channels set up. We have the platforms set up. That's out there. Uh, now we need an evolution in the creative tools to help people kind of improve their craft and, and spend yep. more time. I know if I'm, if I'm a teacher, I'd rather spend more time on my lesson plan and thinking through how to help my students learn than thinking about the technology piece. And so that, that's where you, uh, my, myself and a number of other people at Descript, we come from the like professional tools background. And these things are just, they look like you are operating a command capsule of a Mars rover or something. Like, right, right. They're needlessly complex because if you are a professional and you're working at a facility like Skywalker Sound, you might need that switch one time a month, but when you do, wow, do you need it? Mm-hmm. But for the vast majority of us, you will never need that switch. So it's fair to say we can just either not offer it to you or we'll have an AI control it. What one of the things that really came to my mind, which is a one of the main trends that keeps coming up in the discussions that I have with other guests, is the ease of use that AI and many of these other technologies enable. Kind of many people that wouldn't have thought about either starting a business or creating some sort of content, uh, it really gives them the ability to start these things with these powerful though simplified or i guess user friendly tools that didn't exist you know 5 10 15 20 years ago one of the interesting themes that again comes up is you know this ability to i don't know whether we would be saturated with the amount of new information or or content that's being created uh, maybe many of us are already saturated but just the ability that many people create whatever it is that they want to create over the next several years, I think is a really powerful and maybe even a, maybe a societal or a civilizational aspect that could shift because of these tools that are being created. I, I couldn't agree more. And as the cost of the tools is now yeah. driving to zero and the amount of technology needed to run these tools. You know, you can run these tools on your phone or on a very underpowered laptop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really, there should be no obstacle. I I would say there will always be reasons why people decide not to do this, uh, both good and procrastination related reasons. Uh, But really, it should just be as easy as I have an idea I want to get out there. And if you do just want to press the live stream button, then go for it. Or if you want to hone your message and really put some craft into it and revisit the art of storytelling, there should be tools that you can use without having to go to film school or having to study recording engineering for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also one of the kind of interesting trends, right? The the ability to remove uh, a long learning process because these these powerful AI tools or other tools really replace that. Maybe not in all cases, but certainly at the, the kind of lower level, basic or amateur uh, content creation. Uh, I think it's really interesting that you know we now have all these tools just to be able to use, uh, as you said, at you know really reduced cost. I guess the ability to make some substantial changes uh, is happening now and has happened for for a couple of years and will only increase as time goes on. Right. Couldn't agree more. It's a, it's a really special time and uh, it's thrilled, 
thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, maybe on that uh, positive note, uh, I see that the time is winding down here, Jay. Uh, couldn't thank you more to, to come onto the podcast, talk about Descript and how this tool and others are, are changing kind of the uh, many industries that we uh, discussed a little bit. Um, I will, of course, have in the show notes uh, a number of links to your website, but it, maybe if people want to get a hold of you personally, um, how, can, how can people do that? Absolutely. So um, it, if it's Descript related, definitely uh, come to the website and we have mm -hmm. a lot of contact us materials where you can reach out to us. Uh, I am most active on LinkedIn. So I welcome anybody who listens to this and wants to connect further, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Perfect. Well, I'll have that up in the show notes. And uh, again, thank you very much and um, wish you and Descript uh, all the success possible. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. Great. Thanks. So thanks for listening to this week's episode. If you want to support the podcast, you can leave a like or a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you want to get in touch, feel free to do so over Twitter or LinkedIn by searching for Automated Podcast. On the website, automatedpodcast.org, you can leave a comment on any of the episodes, read the transcripts, and look at the sources I use in all of these episodes. There are also blog articles and additional resources and information on this topic and podcast if you are looking for more. See you next week. The Automated Podcast. <laughs>